My name is Glenn Bell. I'm a senior principal with Simpson, Gumpert & Hager and newly installed president of the Structural Engineering Institute of ASCE. I'm here today with Dr. Jerome Hajar. Jerry is the CDM Smith Professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Northeastern and chairman of that department. And we're here today to talk about an issue that is critical to the future of our profession, and that is the education of the future generation of structural engineers. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. Jerry, when you think about the qualities and the competencies and the skills of the structural engineer of the future, what ideas come to mind? Well, it's an exciting time for civil and environmental engineering. And uh, increasingly, we're seeing a diverse array of topics uh, that are uh, being needed in our profession to address complex problems that we're seeing, for example, in urban and coastal regions. And it's important to bring these ideas uh, back to uh, academia uh, to uh, have these in our curriculum. Great. I see a lot of change happening now and a lot of change on the horizon. I think it's a very exciting time for structural engineering because if you look at the challenges facing society um, in the coming decades, a lot of them really are going to require leadership in many aspects of structural engineering. So we need to prepare uh, for this opportunity uh, to be able to serve society. And I think that means creating a structural engineer that's more broadly capable than, e than ever before. Jerry, we both talked about a broad array of skills and competencies for the structural engineer of the future. What do you see as the role of a formal university setting in creating that engineer of the future? So increasingly we are addressing uh, these issues by um, adding some degree programs uh, that uh, at both undergraduate and graduate level uh, to allow some depth uh, in the program, uh, certainly adding a wide range of technical electives uh, mm -hmm. to add some uh, breadth to the program. Uh, and through combinations of these, our students are able to address some of these diverse issues. Okay. And um, if you look at the whole spectrum of an engineer's career and recognize that with the change coming forward, it's really going to require constant development and education and change. What is the role then in a university setting in that fast-paced environment? Well, I think we start by ensuring that our students have fundamentals uh, in their undergraduate education, uh, but also understand uh, how to incorporate some of the interdisciplinarity that I think are going to be so important for them moving forward. Uh, so for example, uh, we'll have students that uh, might take technical electives uh, in their uh, undergraduate curriculum, uh, but then maybe do a master's degree in uh, a topic such as sustainable building systems, which we've started here recently at Northeastern University. As a leader of a civil and environmental engineering department, how do you engage with industry to ensure that you're producing engineers that are headed in the right direction? Well, we have a great industrial advisory board, uh, and as do many departments. Uh, they are fully engaged uh, in giving us strategic advice uh, about the directions of the profession, uh, and therefore the directions of our program. And they are certainly fully on board with uh, the types of issues that we've been mm -hmm. talking about today because they're feeling it in their profession. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are uh, very much interested in, in how they can engage with academia to help drive these issues forward. Uh, in addition, it's important that industry partner with universities, uh, partner with them on research, uh, partner with them on education, uh, partner with them on, on being a part of the education process for our students. Great. What do you hear from your students about their needs and desires and their views about the future? Well, our students are curious uh, and inquisitive. Uh, they understand and hear about a lot of the complexities that are in the world. They're very interested in trying to address these. They are interested in having global experiences, for example, uh, and uh, a very large percentage of our students now are going overseas for a part of their education. Mm -hmm. uh, they're interested in having uh, service learning opportunities that are quite relevant, uh, really going beyond the nature of the extracurricular activities uh, that we've had in the past. Mm -hmm. They're interested in uh, taking a diverse array of courses. Uh, they understand the concept of both depth uh, and breadth and uh, are trying to address that. So Glenn, what are you seeing on this issue? Well, from the standpoint of an employer and from industry, um, I see a cadre of developing engineers who are really exciting and, and I think it speaks very well about the future of our profession. Uh, they're very driven. They really want to make a difference in the world. 
they have very high expectations from themselves and for their employer. So from an employer's perspective, uh, they're putting a lot of demands on us, which I think is good to see. They want to know what our role is in helping them develop. They understand that their education does not end when they leave university, and so they have high expectations. Many of the areas that they look for in professional development after university are in the softer skills, areas like leadership and communication skills and creativity, teamwork and so forth. So we focus very heavily in those areas. And they have very high expectations for themselves and for their employers. So Jerry, what kind of input and assistance do you get from the American Society of Civil Engineers? Well, the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, has positioned itself really to be a leader on issues in uh, civil and environmental engineering education related, for example, to uh, issues such as accreditation, uh, certification, uh, licensure, and how these impact uh, the education environment. And uh, this is uh, an important role for a ASC. It makes sense uh, that they are doing this. I think it's important that the Board of Direction uh, of ASC and of the institutes uh, understand that this is uh, an important role uh, and we should not be passive uh, about understanding how to address these issues. The world is changing quite rapidly. Uh, the uh, technology in the world is changing quite rapidly. This is going to have uh, impact on the education environment and uh, it's important to understand how that impact, uh, how issues of interdisciplinarity are going to be affecting us and uh, to address this accordingly. In addition, uh, ASC is the convener of the uh, department chairs uh, in civil engineering nationally. Uh, I currently chair the ASC department heads coordinating council, mm -hmm. which uh, convenes the department chairs at a yearly conference. And through this, uh, it's been an excellent environment for discussing these issues, uh, sharing best practices, and thinking about um, how ASC can best uh, help. Jerry, what can we? in structural engineering and civil and environmental engineering learn from the other engineering disciplines or even professions outside of engineering? Well, certainly I think there's much that we can learn uh, from some of these other disciplines and professions. Uh, for example, um, there is a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship uh, in many of the engineering disciplines. Uh, and indeed, uh, in civil and environmental engineering, uh, certainly in structural engineering, we have a lot of innovation uh, that goes on. Uh, each of our projects uh, is essentially a, a new design, a new creation. Uh, but oftentimes we focus uh, especially on life safety, uh, on issues of what I would call economic preservation, mm -hmm. uh, one in 500 year events mm -hmm. uh, and so on, uh, rather than economic creation. And I think if we can um, look at what some of the other engineering disciplines are doing with regards to building in a culture of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, I think that would be of great interest to our students, and I think it will help to continue to drive solutions uh, in civil engineering. In the last 10 years, what changes have you made in the structural engineering curriculum, faculty, and research thrusts? So certainly we've been uh, expanding our structural engineering curriculum, uh, and I think this has been happening uh, around the country. We've been incorporating topics related to uh, big data, sensing, informatics, uh, sustainability. So for example, uh, we have a new Master of Science degree in Sustainable Building Systems, uh, and it has uh, a great opportunity for our structural engineering students either to take electives that are coming off of that uh, master's degree or, or to go into the master's degree after uh, getting their uh, BS uh, in civil engineering with a focus in structural engineering. Uh, the, that degree allows them to take several structural engineering core graduate courses along with complementing their skills uh, by learning more about sustainable building systems. Uh, and that degree is an interdisciplinary degree and so they're interacting with uh, people from a variety of areas. Uh, we've been encouraging our students to um, expand to look at issues of urban engineering, to think about uh, urban planning and other important issues that are affecting structural engineering. Really interesting and innovative. How has the uh, degree in sustainability engineering been received so far? Well, it's been uh, a great success. Uh, it's being done in conjunction with the School of Architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we're getting students from uh, ranging from structural engineering, other civil engineering disciplines, uh, architecture, environmental science, uh, and various other uh, undergraduate majors in this degree. And uh, they learn um, 
uh, not only about some of the theories behind sustainability, uh, but also about uh, uh, mechanical systems and how to address those uh, with respect to sustainability. Uh, they learn about um, information systems, uh, building information models, and other types of systems that can help uh, address these issues, life cycle assessment, uh, and so on. A, a great set of complementary skills uh, to strengthen their structural engineering capabilities. And it sounds very much in line with the thrust towards integrated design and cross-disciplinary thinking. Jerry, here's a question that might be a little tricky. It's something I think a lot about. How do we create this more broadly capable structural engineer of the future without losing the core of what it means to be a structural engineer? Well, I suggest uh, several strategies uh, that we've been doing here at Northeastern University. So first, when we hire our faculty, uh, we've been looking pe uh, for people that have uh, good, strong core uh, civil engineering skills, civil and environmental engineering skills. Uh, but if they have not been interdisciplinary and broad in their thinking, thinking about complex urban regions, as a component uh, of their work, then we haven't been hiring them. Mm -hmm. And so this has allowed us to simultaneously strengthen the core, uh, but also have a great interdisciplinary mix uh, among the faculty. And indeed, uh, since we've been able to do a lot of hiring, there is uh, uh, an intellectual explosion of ideas uh, across boundaries uh, that has really fostered, not only within the uh, department, but also uh, partnering with other departments around the university uh, with joint hiring, for example. Uh, this has all fostered great interdisciplinarity. Uh, second, we've been building into the curriculum what we call innovation threads. These run vertically through the undergraduate curriculum and could even run up into the graduate curriculum, where we look at important topics of our time, uh, this would include uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, sensors uh, and controls, uh, big data, informatics, artificial intelligence, uh, certainly computer uh, simulation, sustainability and resilience, uh, and uh, global awareness, and a variety of topics like this, where we purposely uh, introduce these topics uh, in various courses uh, in each of the years of their undergraduate curriculum, woven into uh, a civil engineering curriculum that, that we would all recognize. Mm -hmm. uh, this has enabled us to uh, expose the students to these important issues uh, and get them ready for uh, the increasingly diverse issues that they'll be uh, seeing out there. Right. This is very interesting to me because we talk a lot about the future structural engineer needing to have a T-shaped profile, if you will, where the stem of the T represents the depth in a particular te technical discipline, yet we have a flange that represents a broad range of skills in, in different areas, technical and non-technical. It sounds like you're actually modeling your department after the competencies of the structural engineer or civil engineer of the future. Uh, that's correct. Uh, and in fact, I talked to the faculty about a V-shaped engineer no. uh, because we want the interdisciplinarity to uh, come up right, right from the bottom and uh, to, to dive down deeper. You know, another uh, thing that we encourage our students to do is to think carefully about their general electives. Uh, these can be such an important complement to uh, uh, full civil and structural engineering uh, education. Mm -hmm. We have uh, many, and many schools will have great courses in, uh, certainly in architecture, mm -hmm. uh, in public policy, um, and in a variety of topics that really uh, can be quite relevant for where, we, where we'd like our students to position themselves for the future. We've talked a lot about instilling creativity into our future engineers. Can creativity be taught? Yes, absolutely, it can be taught. Uh, creativity can be taught uh, in a structured environment and with structured procedures. And certainly there are disciplines out there uh, that do this. And I think uh, increasingly it would be exciting to see this incorporated into civil and structural engineering uh, curriculum. Uh, an example of how we're trying to address that uh, at Northeastern is in our sophomore level uh, materials class, okay. construction materials class, whereby um, we, of course, have uh, lectures uh, in materials uh, and some uh, material science. Uh, and then we have laboratories, and we are uh, having them do laboratories that include um, pulling tensile coupons, crushing mm -hmm. concrete cylinders, uh, as we have for many years. But much of the semester is on an open-ended uh, assignment whereby we have the students choose any material, any material they'd like. It doesn't even necessarily have to relate to civil engineering. Uh, and they study the material, do a little bit of literature review on this, uh, then they 
uh, develop and design a test setup to mm -hmm. characterize properties of the material, particularly the me mechanistic properties, execute the test, uh, take data, sensor data on the test, uh, document the test, write a report uh, on this uh, in an iterative fashion to help uh, address their writing as well. Uh, and through this, with the students working with each other, they learn about a very wide range of materials and then as the semester goes on, start to see the relevance of how many of these apply to civil engineering. Uh, this gets them thinking creatively, not only about uh, the materials and different kinds of materials to use, uh, but also about how to structure a whole framework for thinking about things. Very interesting. So you're not creating entirely new coursework, new curricula on creativity. What you're doing in the case of the lab work is using some traditional curricular materials in structural engineering and then infusing creativity into that process. That's correct. That's certainly one, one strategy uh, that we're taking. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about change and it seems like the pace of change will be accelerating. How can an academic program help professionals adapt to change? Well, I think it's important that we uh, set the core of what we're teaching in the context of what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, and through that, help our students uh, think about what they need to learn, how they need to learn, uh, how they need to keep learning. Our president, Joseph Ayoun, uh, recently published a book called Robot Proof, uh, where he's looking at academia uh, and how to prepare students uh, in an age of artificial intelligence uh, and robotics. And uh, we believe that if we focus on fundamental skills, uh, couple these with uh, important skills related to communications, creativity, uh, related to humanities and social sciences, all uh, working on uh, striving to help improve humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe we can help create students, uh, guide students to be nimble uh, in, their, in their future endeavors. I know Northeastern has a very strong cooperative program. How does the cooperative program enhance an undergraduate experience? And how do you alter your curricula, if at all, uh, to integrate the co-op experience into the learning environment? So co-op is certain, certainly a hallmark of our program, has been a hallmark for over 100 years uh, for our undergraduate program. Uh, and in recent years, we've rolled out co-op for our master's students uh, and also increasingly are incorporating uh, what we call an experiential PhD for our PhD program. Hmm. Uh, in co-op, uh, our, student, our undergraduate students, for example, do two or three six-month co-ops uh, at employers as uh, part of a four or five-year undergraduate degree. And so, for example, they'll all be together freshman year and half of sophomore year, and then we divide the class up and half of them will go out to work for six months while the other half are in school, uh, and then they uh, flip. And uh, so to make up for uh, some of this time with employment, they're going to school for half of the summers uh, as well. And so it, it's a major uh, commitment on the part of a university. Uh, we have two dedicated co-op coordinators in our department who are faculty who help work with the employers to uh, understand their needs and understand, match them with the uh, student interests and the, and the student needs. Uh, and as I mentioned, doing this as well now uh, for our master's students. Uh, it's really a fabulous form of education uh, and uh, helps our students not only understand the industry uh, but really build their skill sets uh, in a variety of complementary ways, helps them understand what's going on uh, in the world, helps them think about uh, and evolve their own interests. And our best co-op employers recognize that they're an integral part of the education and that they're directly helping to educate the students. How does the uh, civil and environmental engineering academic and industrial community help each other in some of the questions we've been talking about today? Well, certainly I think one of the most important things uh, that we can do is partner on research. Uh, research drives innovation, uh, helps to attract uh, new young people into the profession. Uh, and I think there's great opportunity there. I think also uh, uh, professional practice can help us think about how to integrate our disciplinary and interdisciplinary strengths. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and mesh them into what's needed in practice. Very good. Do you find um, that there's alignment among the civil engineering department chairs about the direction that we need to take engineering education in? Well, yes, I think so. I mean, uh, over the last several years especially, but really for quite some time, the department chairs uh, have been convening and talking about many of the same issues that we're discussing today, uh, exchanging ideas uh, and best practices. 
uh, and certainly talking about how best to integrate with industry and practice uh, to help uh, get the support that they need and to help really understand what the directions of the profession are. Mm -hmm. So what can ASCE and SCI do to help with academia? I mean, what should we be doing? Well, I think uh, it's an important question. I think there's uh, much that ASCE and SCI can do uh, to help drive these issues forward. Uh, it's important that the boards uh, recognize that uh, the changing environment that they're seeing out there is not just an issue for the professionals, mm -hmm. uh, but really needs to be integrated with academia. Uh, academia is the gateway uh, for our future professionals, not only those who go on to become uh, civil engineers, structural engineers, but also uh, going into related professions. And so I think this needs to be addressed uh, actively, uh, particularly through the different components that ASC um, has taken the lead on with respect to education. If we want to uh, uh, attract uh, creative professionals, uh, how should we think about doing that, for example, with respect to student competitions? Um, how should we think about evolving issues related to accreditation? Uh, certification and licensure. Um, how do we best uh, address the mix of disciplinary and interdisciplinary skills that we need moving forward? Right. What do you see uh, for these types of issues? Well, I think a lot of my thoughts are in line with yours. Um, I think the central issue is that we really need a lot of dialogue, continuous and deep dialogue between academia and industry about where we're going. And that's going to change over time as well. But if we understand that things are going to be changing rapidly, and if we accept the fact uh, that a career in structural engineering like never before is going to require continuous learning, what we really need to do is sort out in a partnership what our expectations are from a formal university setting and everything that comes after that, the employment experience, continuous education and learning, etc. I really don't think that we have a good understanding of that right now and um, that leads to perhaps some inefficiencies and lost opportunities and so forth. So I think um, the leadership in ASCE and SEI can be the catalyst for that ongoing dialogue. Mm. Jerry, it's always a pleasure to be talking with you about the future of structural engineering. I think that Northeastern and its students in SEI are very lucky to have you. Well, thank you. It's always great to be talking with you about these important issues. Thanks. It's been fun. <laughs>